Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 5, Lesson 7, What is Color? We're going to start by going over some of the key vocabulary words you'll be hearing in today's reading. Our first word is optometrist. A doctor who examines people's eyes to check if their vision needs to be corrected in any way by wearing glasses or contact lenses or by medical treatment. Our last word is x-ray, a powerful invisible ray of energy that can pass through an object and make it possible to see inside of it. A picture that shows what makes up the inside of something such as the bones of the skeleton. We are now going to move into today's reading. It was a sunny Saturday morning and Samuel had invited Amy, Ethan, and Jack to breakfast. It had been three days since Samuel had seen Jack and his grandchildren because he had traveled to the city to a special hospital to have his eyes checked by an optometrist. Samuel set up two extra easels in the garden next to his easel. He was trying to encourage his grandchildren to paint with him. He had long since given up trying to get Jack to take up painting as a hobby. When he was at the hospital, the optometrist had advised Samuel to rest his eyes, but he found it difficult to give up his daily trip to the garden to paint. Amy and Ethan arrived first. They really enjoyed having breakfast with their grandfather. Samuel always served homemade pancakes, eggs, sausages, bacon, and hash browns. The breakfasts were always amazing. Hey, Granddad, yelled Ethan. I'm starving. Is breakfast ready? I doubt you are actually starving, replied Samuel, but it's almost ready. Just scrambling the eggs. Moments later, Jack arrived just in time to help Samuel serve the breakfast feast. Once the food had been served, Alfie arrived in the kitchen with the hope of getting a tasty morsel. Samuel pretended to be strict about feeding Alfie from the table, but in truth, he liked to spoil him. You've outdone yourself, said Jack appreciatively. He too enjoyed Samuel's famous breakfast. What's the plan for today, asked Jack, hoping that they weren't, hoping that there wouldn't actually be one. Well, I'm going to make these two monkeys work a little, said Samuel, grinning. They are going to have a painting lesson, and all three of you are going to have a lesson on the science of color. That just means he's going to talk a lot, announced Jack. The children laughed. Samuel, Jack, and the children spent the next hour eating, talking, and enjoying each other's company. Ethan secretly reached down under the table and fed Alfie small pieces of sausage, though Samuel was perfectly aware of what he was doing. Then after loading the dishwasher and tidying up the kitchen, they made their way out into the garden. Samuel had set the easels up under the shade of the large apple tree. Once everyone was settled, including Alfie, he advised the children to pick a subject to paint, something they could clearly see and would enjoy painting. I'd like to paint the bird feeder, pronounced Ethan. I think I'll paint that pot of geranium, said Amy, pointing to a plant with vivid red petals sitting snugly in a terracotta pot. I've chosen to sit here and close my eyes, said Jack, and then probably did just that. The first thing I want you to understand, and I've already explained this to Jack, is that waves of light energy race through space from the sun to earth, Samuel began. Each type of light energy has its own unique wavelength. We cannot see all of the sun's light energy, but the energy we can see is called visible light. White light is made up of a spectrum of all the colors we see in visible light. Some light is invisible, such as x-rays, continued Samuel. That's complicated, chimed in Ethan. Not really, said Samuel. I agree with him, said Jack, opening one eye and pointing at Ethan. Let me finish explaining, and it might make more sense, continued Samuel. We need light to be able to see. Light from the sun travels to Earth. Most of it is invisible to us unless we have equipment like x-ray machines. The visible light shines on objects in the world around us. Some of the light reflects off objects and into our eyes. Then, parts of our eyes receive that information and communicate with our brain. The, ba the brain figures out what colors we are seeing. However, and this is what is really interesting, said Samuel eagerly, the color of an object is determined by whether that object transmits, reflects, or absorbs light. Sometimes it is a combination. Oh, it is so much easier to understand now, joked Jack. Think of it this way, continued Samuel. Look at the grass. It looks green because it reflects green light waves, but it absorbs the other wavelengths of visible light, meaning it absorbs all the other colors. What does absorb mean, asked Ethan with a puzzled look on his face. He had by now finished sketching the bird feeder and was dipping his paintbrush into some carefully mixed brown paint. Absorbed light is the light that is soaked up by an object and is therefore no longer visible. The color you see when you look at an object is actually the reflected light. 
An object has no color if there is no reflect reflected light, exclaimed Samuel. Oh, I get it, said Amy, who by now was painting the terracotta pot. That's why my art teacher said that black materials absorb all colors of light and do not reflect any. So in a way, black is not a true color. It is more a lack of light. That's exactly right, Amy, said Samuel. White is the opposite of that. An object that appears white to our eyes reflects all the colors of the spectrum and absorbs none of them. Is that why people say you should wear white clothes in the summertime, asked Ethan, who was concentrating hard on painting the roof of the bird feeder? Exactly, exclaimed Samuel. White material reflects most of the light that hits it and absorbs very little. So if you wear white clothing, you tend to stay a little cooler. Who would like some ice cream, asked Jack loudly. He had grown restless and wanted to do something fun. Yay, ice cream, screeched Ethan. Yes, please, said Amy. Here's an interesting question, said Samuel. Which would melt faster, chocolate or vanilla ice cream? The children frowned thoughtfully. Hmm, chocolate, called Ethan. And why is that, asked Samuel. Because it's a darker color and would absorb more light, said Amy. Very good, Samuel. Do you have mint chocolate chip, asked Ethan. That's my favorite, yelled Jack. Mine too, agreed Ethan. Do you have strawberry ice cream, asked Amy. I sure do, said Samuel. Samuel didn't need a reply. Jack and the children were already walking toward the kitchen door. They hadn't realized it, but they had been out in the garden for quite some time, and in that time, rain clouds had gathered in the distance. Moments later, Samuel, Jack, Amy, and Elizabeth were sitting at the kitchen enjoying double scoops of ice cream. Amy and Ethan had drizzled chocolate sauce on top of theirs. There was even a very small scoop of strawberry ice cream for Alfie, even though Samuel knew he really shouldn't have any. What do you call a ghost mother and father? asked Ethan as he licked chocolate sauce from around his mouth. I don't know. What do you call a ghost mother and father? repeated Jack. Transparence, announced Ethan. Which one runs faster? Hot or cold? Ethan continued. Hot. Everyone can catch cold, answered Amy. Ah, you've heard it, said Ethan, sounding disappointed. Okay, how about this one, said Amy. Why is it so hot in a stadium after a football game? Samuel, Jack, and Ethan thought for a while, but could not come up with a good enough answer. Okay, smarty pants, tell us the answer, said Jack. Because all the fans have left, said Amy, clearly delighted with herself. Look at that, said Samuel, pointing through the kitchen window. It's a rainbow, exclaimed Amy. Oh no, he's going to tell us how they are formed, said Jack, pointing his spoon at Samuel. Well, as a matter of fact, replied Samuel, a rainbow is a perfect spectrum of colors. We see this spectrum when waves of white light encounter millions of falling raindrops. Just like the glass of water in the straw, Ethan, the light waves slow down and refract when they come into contact with the transparent raindrops. Essentially, beams of white light break apart into the colors of the rainbow. Each transparent raindrop acts as a prism, perfectly spitting white light into all of its colors, explained Samuel. Oh, we used prisms in class, shouted Ethan. It was so cool. It was like making your own rainbow. Samuel, Jack, Amy, and Ethan continued to chat and joke and enjoy each other's company. After a while, they returned to the garden where Samuel continued the painting lesson. He advised the children to pay attention to the angles and qualities of light and shade that hung in the air like soft, clear, transparent wings. He talked to them about texture and tone. All the while, Jack sat in his garden chair and napped. Morning turned to afternoon and afternoon turned to early evening and no one wanted to leave the comfort and shade of the beautiful garden, not even Elfie. You may now move on to Unit 5, Lesson 7, Google Form.